Hello and welcome to Force 13's latest prediction for the upcoming Northern Hemisphere Cyclone Seasons. 2025 marks our 10th season of forecasts and we didn't quite catch the April predictions, it uh, passed us by somewhat, but we are here for the proper predictions, which have always been the proper predictions, the May 31st ones, and we're happy to bring that to you here on the eve of Atlantic hurricane season. Let's take a look at... <coughs> First of all, uh, NOAA, who issued their uh, 2025 predictions a few days ago, you'll see it next to me on the screen now, uh, they are predicting once again another above average Atlantic hurricane season. They are calling for 13 to 19 named storms, 6 to 10 hurricanes and 3 to 5 major hurricanes this year um, and possibly up to 180%. Uh, of the ace value that we would normally get. So the Atlantic hurricane season predictions, I'll stand in the middle of the uh, picture then, shall I? Um, we are expecting then no less than 15 tropical storms in the Atlantic in 2025, as well as six hurricanes and three major hurricanes presented out here on the grass in front of me right now. So that is the Force 13 forecast for the 2025 hurricane season. We're giving it a 11% chance of a below average season, quite low. 62% uh, chance, a, high, a vast majority there, near average. And a 27% chance of an above average Atlantic hurricane season. So the biggest takeaway for the Atlantic hurricane season really is how uncertain it's going to be, in my opinion. Uh, certainly looking in terms of the numbers and how the conditions are a little bit all over the place. NOAA remarking that uh, wind shear is going to be lower than normal, which is an interesting point. Uh, but what we've noticed really is the marked um, singularity agreement on long-term uh, climatological normals as well as what climatological models are projecting. So one of the biggest things then is um, what looks like we're going to see some pretty sharp recurving storms this season, uh, particularly just off the eastern seaboard of the United States. Uh, very interesting to see some of these potential tracks um, with the peak season being average, possibly a little bit below average in one or two of the months and maybe a bit of a sharper peak in October than what we're used to, um, at least this time around. And for the tracks, I would say that the Caribbean, uh, we're looking at some uh, pretty interesting interesting possibilities there especially the eastern Caribbean when we're going through the peak season and the western greater Antilles western Caribbean region into the late season of this Atlantic hurricane season now in between all of that we've also marked out once again the big bend region of the Florida Gulf Coast unfortunately another 45 percent we've given chance of impacts and the US East Coast around North Carolina also giving a substantial chance but Another big one here, 20% chance for the New York City area. We haven't given a 20% chance for that area since the 2019 predictions, which is some time ago, and we used to be a little bit more aggressive back then, but that's what we're giving it again in 2025 for potential impacts. It's looking pretty normal around the Gulf of Mexico region, all along the Gulf Coast uh, through Louisiana, 30% little local high there, another 30% down in Veracruz, and also a 30% in parts of the southern uh, bend area of Texas. Yucatan Peninsula also looking at pretty moderate chances, around about average. Uh, certainly can't rule out though one or two strong hurricanes once again this season. Uh, just trying to see what I wrote down for that regarding intensity. Not too much to be honest, but obviously forecasting three major hurricanes, although they're more likely to be out at sea or near just riding that ridge um, all across the Western Atlantic there, uh, there is obviously the possibility that it could arrive somewhere on your doorstep, somewhere along the US East Coast or through any of those islands, the Lucayan Archipelago or the Caribbean region at large. Gulf storms, I would say, is the most uncertain part of the Atlantic this season. We have our numbers for the 2025 upcoming seasons. It's taken a lot of research that we've put into this. Uh, we hope we've done a good job. It's not infallible, absolutely not. Um, and the conditions do change throughout the year. Um, and like I said as well, in fact, I don't think I've said this yet, but looking at the El Nino uh, ENSO pattern, 
it is pretty neutral which means that there's a lot of uncertainty and even the ENSO forecast is quite uncertain because we don't know if we might just pop up into a positive for a while maybe even getting towards a weak El Nino or whether we'll just be uh, staying neutral and then dropping back down towards the La Nina towards the end of the season and what does neutral slash La Nina mean yes more Atlantic activity so it looks like that might be on the cards again this season although we are only expecting an average season on our numbers Noah have it pegged up a little bit higher than that although they sort of uh, straddle average and above average in their quite wide margin of error that they put out so we're towards the bottom end of that margin of error uh, within Noah's forecast once again the Atlantic 15 storms is what we're expecting you can uh, react to all of this on our discord server you can check out discord.gg slash force 13 uh, to chat with other weather watchers from around the world join discussion you can also find all of our social media links on our link tree uh, and you can also join the team if you want to help us out during our coverage this season uh, and be on our streams and uh, help give out really important information at really crucial times uh, please send us a message you can email us contact at force13.com or get in touch through one of those aforementioned outlets